Hi and welcome to a new 3D4 tutorial. This video is all about rolling shutter and how to compensate effects caused by it in a shot. For this purpose, we will solve two different shots, each showing a major problem when dealing with rolling shutter. So let's get started with the first one. At first a quick look at the existing material. As we can see, this is a nodal pan shot of two objects in front of a green screen filled with markers. Quite a nice setup provided by Science Division Studios. Further, we can see all markers are already tracked in this project. Last, we do have a correctly adjusted lens and fixed camera constraint was set. So, nothing's holding us back. Calc the project. Oh boy, that doesn't look good. Deviation is a catastrophe and the deviation curve is formed like a sinus curve. Not hard to guess, something's wrong here. Let's have a closer look at curve and shot. When moving the frame slider to the first peak, we can see a great amount of blur in this frame. But that shouldn't affect anything. What's bothering more are the skewed objects, not really what they look like in reality. In the frames around peak 2, again, yellow rod and blue box are banded diagonally, this time in mirror direction than around the first peak. Very strange. Everything's alright here. And again, transformed. How did that happen? This shot perfectly shows the effect of so-called rolling shutter. Rolling shutter is caused by the way digital cameras record footage. Let me explain. Most cameras do not capture a single frame instantly at once, but rather scan across the scene from top to bottom. So, with rapid movements in the scene, it can happen that the actual object moves further in real life until the scan gets to the last line of the camera sensor. This results in transformed objects. The advantages of this method are a high sensitivity of the sensor, it can continue to gather photons during the acquisition process, and of course, costs. The contrasting recording method is called global shutter. Here, the entire frame is captured at once and therefore avoids any transformations. As we can see in this nodal pan shot with the same setup, recorded with global shutter, even in frames with the same rapid movements, both objects aren't angled in any way. Well, as annoying this effect is, it is very common and we have to handle it to deliver a correct solve. But before we start, let's have a quick look at the reconstruction quality of 3D points. Yeah, bad as expected. Alright, everyone on board. Next up, rolling shutter compensation. In Attribute Editor, tap Camera, we find a parameter with the same name. Expand it. Then activate its toggle button. The parameter of our desire is frame-wise time shift, which can be adjusted by parameter adjustment window. So let's add this pane to our main window. Now add the time shift parameter. Since we do not have any clue about a possible value, set range to wide and increase the number of samples. Hit button adjust and transfer the adjusted parameter value. Perfect! That's how it should look like. An ideal V-shaped curve with a clear low point in the middle. Please also note, deviation with this timeshift value is a tenth of the current one. Good job! Just to be sure there aren't any values missed by the sample-based adjustment method, adjust again with method adaptive. Good! Deviation really improved, even if it's a tiny bit. It seems we have a perfect value. Let's call it the project. Wow, deviation hugely decreased to a normal value. And the curve itself looks way better as well. There still are some minor bumps, but considering the rapid camera movements, these are acceptable. Let's have a closer look at reconstructed 3D points. Choose any point you like and zoom in for a better view. Scrubbing through the sequence, we notice the green cross is much more stable than previously, but still moves quite much away from the tracking point along x-axis. 
way too much for our new low deviation. But don't panic. There's nothing wrong with this tracking point nor with the 3D point. This is caused again by rolling shutter. More precisely, 3D points are already displayed rolling shutter corrected. So it's more a display issue than a calculation error. To fix this, simply display the rolling shutter adjusted to deposition position of tracking points. Activate toggle button U, rolling shutter time shift. For a better view, deactivate motion vectors. We notice there is now a gray dot near the cross's center. That's the 2D point adjusted accordingly to rolling shutter. When we go through the sequence, green cross and 2D point do not differ much. Great, looks like we solved the shot. There's one issue left. If 3D4 can correct rolling shutter and even display corrected 2D point positions, can it also apply rolling shutter compensation on the image? You might guess, yes it can. Switch to lineup controls. Like previously in motion tracking controls, rolling shutter compensation for 2D points can be displayed here as well. Back to the main topic, displaying a rolling shutter free image. Let's find a frame with huge rolling shutter effects. Good. Next activate view, remove rolling shutter. That's all. We can see 3D4 transform the image tremendously to compensate rolling shutter. Both objects, yellow rod and blue box are perfectly vertical. Let's have a look at them in other frames. Great. For the last time, let's have a closer look at reconstructed 3D point. Here as well, the 3D point is now perfectly in the middle of the marker. Finally, we got a shot worth to be delivered. So, we learned about rolling shutter in general and how to compensate it with 3D4. In the next step, we face another huge problem. Rolling shutter in a shot with translating camera. Welcome back! A different camera movement, a different problem to solve. In this shot we see a camera panning along a green screen having markers placed on it. And our beloved friends, yellow rod and blue box. Again, we have markers tracked throughout the entire sequence. Since it's the same camera and lens as in the previous rotation shot, the parameters are the same. Ok, everything's set up, let's calc the project. The result isn't worth a penny. Beside a way too high deviation, the deviation curve is again screaming for help. It's so wrong we can skip any closer checking of 3D points and get straight to a closer look at the objects in this shot. We notice both objects are skewed. But this time, they seem to be skewed with different angles. In this frame as well, the yellow rod is transformed more than the blue box. Kind of strange. But nevertheless, a good start is adjusting rolling shutter for this shot. In the attribute editor, enable rolling shutter and add it to parameter adjustment window. Then add this pane to the main window. Here as well, we have no idea about a plausible value, so set range to white and increase the number of samples. Great, we got an ideal V shaped curve, and the calculated deviation is not even 10% of the current one. Just to be sure there aren't any values missed by the sample based adjustment method, adjust again with method adaptive. Good, good. Deviation improved even further. Adjusting is done. Calc the project. Deviation hugely improved and deviation curve is back to normal as well. It seems we solved all errors again. Let's check this. Switch to lineup controls and choose a 3D point for a closer look. As expected, our 3D point isn't really glued to its marker, since the shot is still displayed with rolling shutter effects. Fix it by activating view, remove rolling shutter. 
Well, that didn't work out as planned. The 3D point still moves away from its marker, even the 2D point isn't where it should be. Strange. Let's have a look at the entire shot. Everything's messed up pretty bad. All objects are still skewed. Why did this happen? The answer is a tricky combination of parallax and rolling shutter. When panning along objects positioned differently towards the camera, these objects are moving with different speeds. Objects closer to the camera are faster than objects in the background. Simple parallax effects. So good so far. Now rolling shutter comes into play and of course captures the different speeds, which results in a slightly different amount of rolling shutter for each object. Well, how can we compensate this issue? Unfortunately, that's not possible. Applying some kind of a Z-depth animated rolling shutter compensation is an immense, nearly impossible image manipulation and would require a precise rolling shutter value for each distance value in the first hand. But to brighten you up again, there's one thing we can do. 3D4 provides a parameter called content distance. With this value we can choose which distance and therefore which object should be compensated. So in our case, at least we can compensate rolling shutter for a single object. When shooting this sequence, we thought of measuring the distance from camera to green screen. So we do know, to compensate rolling shutter for the markers, the value is 243 centimeters. Let's have a closer look at the markers. Well done! It worked! All reconstructed 3D points are again in the middle of their markers. But what about the other two? Blue box and yellow rod weren't measured, so we have to find out ourselves. At first, blue box. Let's decrease the value until the box isn't angled anymore. Have a look in different frames. Not bad for setting it with our eyes alone. Do the same for our yellow thread. We can assume it's much closer to the camera than the blue box, so maybe it's something around 90 centimeters. Check in other frames as well. Great! Obviously, this method is not as precise as having measurements or calculated values, but it's the closest we can get and after all, the result really is quite good. So, we learned that rolling shutter is not global throughout the shot, but can differ depending on the distance of objects. Remember, this effect only appears when translating the camera. We cannot fix this for all distances, but 3D4 allows us to choose at least a certain distance for compensation. Now comes the pro tip. With this knowledge, you can improve all CG directly at this stage of rendering. If you render CG with calculated rolling shutter value, all your CG for this shot will match with the rolling shutter effects in the footage. This avoids a lot of conflicts later down the pipeline. Please refer to the manual of your rendering software if it provides such a feature. In the last stop of this tutorial, we will export rolling shutter compensation of the first nodal pan project to Nuke. But at first, let me ask you a question. What happens if we modify content distance here as well? The answer is... Drumroll! Of course, nothing happens, but I bet you knew that. Since we do have a nodal pan shot without any camera translation, rolling shutter is the same at any distance. So, exporting! In menu 3D4, File, Export, we find a script called Export New Grid Warp Rolling Shutter. Select it and a new window appears. Let's have a look at its parameters. Set path and name for the export file. Content distance refers to the parameter in the attribute editor and can be neglected for this project. Yes, we like to export our scene with distortion data. Start frame and resolution are correct. Parameter Grid Warp Resolution defines the amount of control vertices of the grid. There's no need to modify this in at least 99% of all cases. However, in shots with extreme distortion like fisheye, increasing this value might be helpful, but at the cost of performance. Finally, hit the button to export.
after some time the file was created. So switch to Nuke. Here our nodal pan shard was already imported and connected to the viewer. Import the node we just exported. A quick tip, if the read node is selected while importing, Nuke automatically inserts the new node after it. Double click on it to make it visible in the viewer. We see, the grid is animated and transforms accordingly to compensate rolling shutter in every frame. Hide the grid for a better view at the object. Great! Within the entire shot, yellow rod and blue box are perfectly vertical. Wasn't that nice? We learned about rolling shutter and its contrasting recording method Global Shutter. How to compensate this annoyance was demonstrated with two shots, a nodal pan and pan shot. Further, we saw how the impact of rolling shutter can differ depending on the distance of an object towards the camera. And of course how to deal with this issue, namely how to use parameter content distance. Lastly, we exported solved data to Nuke. Well, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.